Hello, this video will explain how to develop a realistic LoRa model of a real person using Stable Diffusion 1.5 and SDXL and compare the differences between the two. Now, our subject is Catherine Winnick. Now, the data set is like this one. Now, I scrapped this data from Google, so there are some inconsistencies in the data. For example, this image is slightly different from this one, from this one, but in general, they are for the same uh, subject. Uh, some of the problems in the data is that the full body shots are not so clear for some of them. However, however, in general, uh, some of them are also acceptable for, or good for the full body shots. Now, these images are produced by the Stable Fusion 1.5. You can see that the results are hyper-realistic and they are very similar to the training uh, subject. Okay. We will see how using high resolution images can produce better results than lower resolution images. We can see here, for example, the level of details is extremely high. Now in my training data set, I only have one image with a smile with teeth. So we can see that the teeth is learned pretty well for the subject. Now regarding the data set, the data set must have a variety. That means different clothing, different backgrounds, different body poses. I have one image with teeth. I have 23 images, but all the data is 1024 by 1024 or 600 and uh, 640 by 1024 in, for image size. Now we can see here the results from a stable diffusion 1.5. The portraits are perfect. The full body shots are also really good. But when it comes to the full body shots, we need to use after detailer, for example, to produce high quality faces because uh, we don't have many data of uh, high quality for the full body shots. Now we can see here, for example, that the subject can change, uh, the, have different types of clothing, different types of clothing that do not exist in the data set. All these clothes don't exist in the data set. I don't have yellow shirts, blue, green, etc. So I used different clothing. I've trained two models for SDXL, one with 28 network dimension and one with uh, 16 network dimension. We can see that the results are also highly realistic. They are very realistic, the level of details, especially the skin. Using network dimension of 16 only, we can see that using 16, network dimension of 16 produces almost the same results as 128. So it's very recommended to reduce the network dimension to reduce the uh, file size. Okay, we can see that the level of details is very high, especially for the eyes, the hair. It's, uh, okay, these are different clothes, different body shots for the same character. This is using Photon, Stable Fusion 1.5, but also uses uh, After Detailer. Uh, now, according to stability, uh, the recommended uh, image sizes that you can use for training or for production would be approximately 1024 by 1024. We can use lower resolution images as well, but higher resolution would produce better results. Now, if we have full body shots, we can put them inside such resolution or use resolution such as 768 by 1344 pixels. Now, for my data set, I will use lower resolution, which is 640 by 1024, because um, I wanted to train the same data in SDXL and SD 1.5. Now regarding folder structure for the LoRa training, as explained in the previous video, you would have a folder for the output such as model, a folder for the images, and a folder for the class. For the images, we would create another folder and put our images inside it. The naming convention would be the number of repeats such as 20, underscore, the instance prompt, space, the class prompt, which is woman. I will use instance prompt xyzkwv1 for example, uh, in order to avoid uh, to av avoid having any names in the uh, instance prompt, to avoid any confusion with the SD uh, checkpoint in case the name exists or similar names exist. For the class folder, we would put number of repeats one underscore woman the class. Now the contents of the class folder, they should be high quality images generated by the same stable diffusion checkpoint or realistic uh, images, for example. It's better to have realistic images because these data will be trained along with the images. So they will affect the training results. The better the, quality, the uh, regularization images, the better the output will be. Okay, so it's better to have high quality regularization images and of the same size as the training data. Now we choose the folder where the images are located. Then we remove 
all the features that we want to be part of our LoRa. For example, when girls smile, the color of the hair, the color of the eyes, etc. Now these are features of the character, so we have to remove them from the captions, okay? We will also use a trigger word, which is the same as the instance prompt. Now this trigger word will be located in each of the caption files. Uh, it's better to include trigger word when we are using regularization. Without using regularization, however, trigger word become uh, become less effective. Now, after captioning is complete, we can also double check the captions using borrow uh, tag manager and uh, make sure that all the captions are correct and update our captions. Usually, we should check each of the captions to make sure that captioning is correct and uh, do some additions if necessary because the captioning, the automatic captioning might not uh, convey all the information that we need or may uh, produce wrong captions in some cases. Now we go back to Koyo SS graphical user interface, select the source model as custom, and choose an existing base model such as Photon for SD 1.5. If we are training SDXL base model, for example, we choose that model, then we turn on SDXL model checkbox to the right. Then we go to the folders to set up the folders. Now in the folders, we need to, se to select the image folder, the, uh, possibly the log folder, the output folder, and the class folder. Then we put the name of the model that we want. After this point, we go to the parameters and select a suitable set of parameters for the training. Now we choose uh, LoRa standard for training normal LoRa or Licorice, such as Licorice Locoon. Uh, to train Lucris uh, files. Now we, we may train Lucris if we see that the low results were not satisfactory, for example. Um, now for the Lucris, we would often use uh, a lower network rank, for example, 32 or less for Stable Fusion 1.5 with network alpha of 4 or lower. Now with completion and rank of 4 or 3, for example, with alpha of 1 or lower value. Having lower alpha will make the training smoother. Uh, the effect of the lower weights uh, becomes lighter. Now I will train a standard LoRa. So I choose standard. We'll use batch size of 1. We can use higher if you have stronger GPU, uh, which is a suitable number of epochs depending on, on the number of repeats and the number of images used. I will use, uh, I usually uh, use 5 to 10 epochs, okay, with number of repeats of 10 or 20. Uh, mixed precision BF16 for NVIDIA GPU. I will keep the defaults for learning rate scheduler because they really work well. Now I choose maximum resolution of 1024 by 1024 depending on your data. Mine has max of 1024 pixels. We'll also enable buckets because I have images of a different resolution. Now for the standard LoRa, usually we don't require more than 64 network, network rank when we have uh, 23 images for instance, but since I have large resolution images of 1024, I will use higher network rank of 128. The higher the network rank, the more information it can uh, preserve and learn. However, this can result in overfitting faster. Uh, I would use alpha value of 32 or lower that usually produces finer results than uh, having a higher alpha value. Now, in, in the advanced configuration, uh, we can turn uh, gradient checkpointing if we have lower VRAM such as mine because I'm training on 1024 by 1024. My GPU will not handle it, so I turn this option uh, on and I'll be able to train a standard LoRa file. Now, in the sample images config, it's very useful to have a sample prompt so that we can see the output of Koya. Okay, it will allow us to stop early, for example, if we see that overfitting is happening or that further training is not producing better results. This will save us a lot of time. And now we start the training. Uh, we can see buckets used are 640 by 124. The second bucket is 1024 by 1024. Now, number of regularization images used are, six, are 460 with the regularization factor of 2, so the images loaded are 460 plus 23 training images. This gives us 683 images. Now, during the training, you can also edit the prompt that generates the image, images by going to the model folder, sample folder, and editing the prompt file manually. Now we check uh, the results from Koya SS. Okay, 
Now, this will allow us to see an initial preview of the images and decide if we should continue training or not. Now, we can see from the first ebook that the training results are good. The second ebook is really good. The third ebook, okay, this seems that starting from the second ebook, the results are uh, really uh, very good and they resemble the target. So, this is up to ebook 8. So, I stopped the training. Uh, we will do further conversion in stable diffusion, but it seems that all ebooks from st starting from the second ebook are producing good results. Oh, it's models. Now, because I'm training SDXL, I need to turn this one on. Now, regarding the folders, it's the same workspace. My data exists in data folder. For the image, it exists in image folder. Okay. Now, uh, subsequently, there are is the classification where I put it in the class and the output folder would be in model or out now we can start XYZ name in the model output XYZ KW V1 SDXL for example okay the log folder we can create a log folder for as well and call it log then we would set the parameters. We would choose standard LoRa, training batch 1, for example. Let's put it up to 10. Uh, it's unlikely I will use only 8. Okay. Uh, we can set the mixed precisions and the remaining settings. Now I'll be using BF because we are using RTX card. I will use the same settings. We can also use add a factor, for example, for lower VRAM. The settings will be 1024, same as the standard LoRa that we used earlier. Okay. Now we could also use extra arguments if we are using add factor or other uh, optimization settings. Now, no half VIE for SDXL. It will not be uh, very much different from the first LoRa in case someone uh, or we needed to merge it with another LoRa. Now, if we want to merge LoRa's, we need to have the same network dimension. That's uh, very, very useful. Now, I will use the same seed, which is uh, seed 1, that I used in the standard LoRa. This will allow conversions to be much uh, much easier. Uh, we can use cache latency to disk if we want to uh, produce different iterations or to try different settings. Now, I will uh, use just X warmers. I want to use gradient checking, uh, checkpointing because we have a large enough VRAM. Now, uh, regarding something here, it's called uh, noise offset. I will use noise offset of this value. Okay. Now, this value is the value that was trained using uh, in SDXL, so I will use the same value here. So uh, we can see that the training has started. Uh, like I've said, because I've, uh, I've used only eight epochs. Uh, in this uh, model, there will be 7,360 total number of steps. I might stop the training earlier. Now, uh, when I used 128 uh, network dimension, we see that the file size is very huge in comparison to stable diffusion 1.5. This means that we need to actually reduce the dimension if we want to have smaller uh, that uh, file size. If we check the resulting images, we can see that uh, if starting from ebook one, the generation is good with high level of details. The second ebook, okay, it's starting to getting very strong. Uh, the level of details is very high. Now, in this setting, I will reduce the network dimension down to 16, for example, or 32. So let's reduce this down to, for example, 16. Okay, and reduce a network alpha of 4, for example, and uh, check the results, how they will turn out to be. Then we will check the settings once again. So uh, this is epoch 7. Okay, I see that epoch, this is epoch 6 and epoch 5. So I don't think that epoch 7 is uh, improving anymore, so I will stop the training stop training now we will do the comparison now for the testing first we try the standard stable diffusion 1.5 for example photon we would uh, a sample prompt we make uh, create a simple prompt okay then we go to script xyz and use search and replace we start with the prompt here 
Now uh, this one, I will replace it with the epochs from 2 till 7. I will not use 8, okay. Uh, the first epoch did not uh, look so good, so we will just start from 2 to 7. And uh, when we run uh, the, the results, we see that uh, using only 768 by 768, despite that we trained on 124, we get perfect results. These results are really good and uh, very equal to the training data. Now, once again, if we run using 124 by 124, 1024, we see that the results are also uh, great. Okay, so uh, if we do several tests, we see that the standard door can actually produce uh, amazing results with high level of details. If we come here, for example, we can check the individual images and see that the images are really perfect. Uh, they, they are very similar to the subject. Now we can also test uh, comparisons between portraits, cowboy shots, full body shots, etc. And uh, check the results. But usually, stable diffusion 1.5 does not produce great full body shots because it requires higher resolution images, but the use of after detailer can resolve this. For example, if we copy this command here and just put it in the after detailer, it will become possible to produce high quality faces uh, when the details are not so perfect. The results are hyper realistic and they are very similar to the training uh, subject. Okay, we can see here, for example, the level of details is extremely high. Now, in my training data set, I only have one image with a smile with teeth. So we can see that the teeth is learned pretty well for the subject. Now, we can see here the results from a stable diffusion 1.5. The portraits are perfect. The full body shots are also really good. But when it comes to the full body shots, we need to use after detailer, for example, to produce high quality faces because uh, we don't have many data of uh, high quality for the full body shots. Now we can see here, for example, that the subject can change, uh, the, have different types of clothing, different types of clothing that do not exist in the data set. All these clothes don't exist in the data set. I don't have yellow shirts, blue, green, etc. So I used a different clothing. We can see that the results are also hyper realistic. They are very realistic. The level of details, especially the skin, using network dimension of 16 only, we can see that using 16, network dimension of 16 produces almost the same results as 128. So it's very recommended to reduce the network dimension to reduce the uh, file size. Okay, we can see that the level of details is very high, especially for the eyes, the hair. It's uh, okay. These are different clothes, different body shots for the same character. So this is it and uh, have a good day.